اللهم يا من جعلت السحر ابتلاء فأنت برحمتك لن تنسانا وأنت جل جلالك الذي خلقت له الدواء فلكل داء دواء ولكل ابتلاء شفاء الحمد لله الذي أرسل رسول بالهدى والدين الحق لذراء دين كل وكفى بالله الشهيد وشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد أحب في الله we live in times where people want to do evil we live in a world where evil has spread so much that no one cares about no one but the individual only cares about his own gain or his own benefit selfishness has taken the upper hand even sisters destroy their sisters sisters destroy their brothers brothers destroy their sisters just to gain the upper hand just to control or just to take the wealth there's so many low life brothers sisters mothers aunts uncles a lot in the world today the world we live in there's only one way forward is by holding tight to the quran and sunnah and staying away from all evil individual today i'm going to narrate a story a sister narrates the story anonymous it begins by her saying i got married when i got married alhamdulillah after 10 month i became pregnant and i gave birth and we were living in a rented house my husband was a businessman everything he touches turned to money and he built a big flat for himself before building the flat he says to me i'm going to buy a flat or i'm going to build a flat and then inshallah i bring all my family members here because my dad has passed away when i was 18 and i was the only one who's looking after them that is what he did he bought the flat when he bought the flat the bottom flat they took it the wife and the child and the father stayed in the bottom flat the middle flat he called his sick brother there were three brothers and sister and a mother so he called his second brother he got him married and he stays in the second flat the third flat it was going to be for his third brother his mom and his sister he brought his third brother but his third brother was already married so he brought her with his wife and his sister and his mom the sister narrates says the problem started then when the third brother came and the sister and before that my husband bought three cars and each car he divided to his three brothers and the top apartment the last top apartment he wrote it down on his brother and i was telling him don't do that you have children while the situation is going on allah has gave me a daughter so now i have a son and a daughter and my husband already distributed all his wealth the first floor he gave it to his brother who was a nice gentleman the second he gave it to his brother who was very known to be an evil man one of the days his sister comes to me and tell me this is the day i will never forget she says nobody can separate my brothers and i thought what is she on about and i kept quiet times goes by situation started to change in the house and between me and my husband we started to having a lot of clash and we started slowly slowly having illness and normal illness my husband slowly slowly started to drop off from work from his business until he cannot do no business anymore every time i told him to go to do business and go back to his business he says i feel my body like it's been chopped i've got headache i just want to lie down in bed and me i'm feeling at the same time but i'm i'm holding myself tight i'm moving forward strongly 
I can see my husband is weak. The situation became worse. And from where the situation is slowly, slowly deteriorating, I became ill and ill and ill. And one time my stomach started to pain and ripping me apart. And I'm telling, I'm, I'm started to tell my husband, oh, my husband, my stomach, please. And so we start shouting and arguing. And there he smacked me, I fall down. And when I fell down, I start crying there. And I gone to the, he's gone to the room. And he locks himself, he sits himself there and turns the lights. He always loves to stay in the dark on his own in the bed, just like that, sitting in the bed or sitting in the ch chair in the room, just like that. I called my brother. My brother comes and picks me up, takes me to the hospital. And the hospital, they check me up. They said, there's a child died in your stomach. One month ago, now we need to clean this or you will die because of this pain and all what is happening. So they've cleansed her, they leave her in the hospital, they've cleansed her, and when she feels clean, being cleansed from the pregnancy, miscarriage, they took her, she went to her family house. She stayed there for a month. She says, even one day, my husband never came and checked me up. And I was thinking, what is wrong with my husband? And what is wrong with me? I don't know what is happening, but I rely upon Allah and I called upon Allah. Now, after one month, I come back home. When I look at my husband, tears drop down in my tears. I see my husband in a very difficult state. No shower, no, no ugly situation of his, ugly. And, and I look at the closets, all my clothes is been taken out. And now I start feeling like the house is not a normal house. Like there's someone inside the house following me everywhere I go. And everywhere I sit, I feel like there's someone sitting in the corner of where I sit watching me. And I feel this is an old woman, either in the room, either in the living room. I feel that. The situation changed slowly and slowly. I'm starting to feel ill more, ill more. And my husband stopped from working. He stopped doing nothing. Our income is dead. And we start using our savings. And slowly, slowly, I start selling my properties, goals and everything. Slowly, slowly. And I start complaining to my family. And I start telling them, Something is not right. He's crying to the brothers and everything. And they came and picked her with a daughter and a son. And before picking up her and a son, she says, every time I feel this entity is in the room and is in the living room, I have only one person to tell and to narrate. It's my older sister. Every time I narrate to my elder sister, she tells me, don't worry about it. It could be it's just in your mind. And I'm thinking, how is this? But every night, my son started waking up, crying and running towards me. And saying, mom, every night, I see an old woman sitting there, very ugly, and she's looking at me. Now, I started to realize Whatever I see is for real because my son sees it well, so it's not in my mind. And then from there, I complained to my family. And my family, I cried. My brother came and picked me up, and I went. I lived there for one year. In this one year, my brothers took me to Shiochs, and they read on me. Even one day, my husband did not come and check on me or speak on me. He comes here and there and just speak to the son and goes away. For this one year, I got treated from shiuchs after shiuchs. And they narrate, they say, this sister of yours telling my brothers that she has magic done on her. Very strong magic. Now, I started to have a feeling that also... My husband, after they say that, 
I know deep down my husband is facing the similar situation because we had similar symptoms all along. It's just that I was strong and he became weak and that's it. And then she goes back home. When she goes back home, situation is gloom, difficult. And she calls some of the shukhs and they read on the husband and the husband started to react and my husband some day is all right some day is not all right but he's always in his room and the woman is always there and the advice of the shukh tell me to read surah baqarah and i was reading surah baqarah i was holding tight to my salah and i was holding tight to my azkar and one of the days I started to smell gas in the kitchen. And I took hold my husband. And my husband smelled and said, there's nothing there, don't worry about it. So he goes, the third day, I was on the phone with my sister. Now my sister is believing she's on my side. Alhamdulillah, she says, I put on the gas, the cooker, it blew it. And I fell down, boah, collapsed. My husband came running and picked me up. My sister and my brother came running to us and they picked me up. They took them, took me to the, they took the sister to the sheikh and the sheikh started reading, reading, reading. And they discovered they've done on her sihr, another one, which is called sihr al-tashwi jamal black magic of distorting the beauty and since then the sister is afraid so much to go to the kitchen she's always goes to the kitchen her husband is there or her son is there or someone is there the situation became difficult and difficult and they've had the sheikh in another town and they decided to go there her husband and herself and her brother. They drove there. When they went there, the sheikh read on them and read on them and read on them and, and said to them that you have so much magic. You have black magic of fear, sihrul khawf, and you have sihrul junoon, black magic to make you crazy. And there's so much sihr in your house. And he gave them water, so much water, and said, take this to find a sheikh in your town and go with him, sprinkle the house, let him read while you're sprinkling this and hold tight to Surah Baqarah daily. She says, from there now, I felt, alhamdulillah, situation started to improve. But the woman is still in the house. So when we came home, when we came back to our town, we went and seek help from the sheikh who is in the town. He went with us and sprinkled everywhere. We never left anywhere. Sprinkled and sprinkled. And then we discovered things in the closet, things in the boiler, things in... We discovered hair, locks, knots, a lot. We took them all and destroy them, alhamdulillah. And from there, we started to feel peace in the house. And, but the woman is still there in the house, the evil woman, the jinn woman. Now, I know what comes into my mind, is, she says, is that what my sister-in-law told me. And, I have no doubt this is my sister-in-law and someone cooperating with it. So every time my brother-in-law comes, my husband's situation deteriorates, the younger one. He comes and one of the day he comes, he says, I'm going to take something, I'm going to take this and you've got nothing to do with it. This is my property. And the brother is sitting there, he cannot speak. Every time they go out, they come back home, 
the husband and wife and the children, they found sprinkled water, water there in the door, or they found strange things in the door. And they start feeling different in the door. So he says, it's a challenge for me. So I started to read four surah to Baqarah every day, reading on the water. Every time I found anything, I sprinkle. This is a life I'm going through until today. It's a challenge I am going through because it's my brother-in-law and his wife and my sister-in-law who's behind this and they are doing it every day or every another day we found things outside our door and slowly slowly now my husband start picking up himself up and start going to work but let me tell you something he says i read four surah to baqarah every day in our house alhamdulillah our situation has changed so much now one of the days my husband fell short and we took to a sheikh we wanted to go back to the same sheikh to another town but we were told that sheikh is no there so we found another sheikh who is in our town we went to him when we went to him the individual read and read and read and read on my husband and found out his go sihru ta'a wa sihru al khudu black magic of obedience and black magic of taking his property all his things he gave it to his brother the younger brother the sister says this is my situation until today struggle but i am fighting back not like before i was defeated totally i didn't know what to do now i am 90% steadfast and my husband the same now he's going back to work for years we were struggling and i was i had question marks and question marks in my brain what is happening to us but alhamdulillah my husband is a very good person and for his generosity for his love to his family this is what they did one of his brother and his sister did this to him just to take his property through magic ahibba fillah when the magic hits you it hits you very bad it's not only one magic it could be several magic out there there is so many low life people out there there is so many evil people out there low life brothers in law low life sisters in law just be careful low life aunts uncles mom dad all of them low life just be wary this is a lesson from the low life brothers and low life sister in law if you have any story there you want your story to be heard and you want people to make dua for you my email will be in the end of this video inshallah send it to my email inshallah i will narrate your story send it from the beginning of your story until now how you are going say tune for more abu yahya from the rock talk wa akhir da'wana wa salamun ala al mursalin walhamdulillahi rabbil alamin hatta yatabayyana lahum annahu al haqq